your start because your brother stole your car? Uh, the most interesting voice actor. I, I like the adjustment of time on that because it was actually before then. But yes, um, but that's okay. I'll just shave a little time off the top. It's good. Uh, uh, yes, I did when I did start, which was actually, um, I've been doing this actually since 96, so a little bit before then. But um, my brother stole my car, so I had, I was in school and I had to take a semester off because I got mono very badly. Yeah, exactly, everybody can relate to that. Uh, my car also got mono and it wouldn't start. So <laughs> we used to hang the keys on the hook over by the thing. My brother came one day, he took the keys, took my car, dropped it off somewhere. I come wake up, my car is gone and I get a phone call, it's my brother. I'm like, hey, where's my car? He's like, it's at George's house. And I'm like, who's George? And then he hangs up. So um, I wound up having to, yeah, no, exactly. Listen, my other brother became a cop, so it all balances out in the end. But um, so I wound up chasing after this, uh, trying to figure out another friend, Rob, called up. He came to pick me up and I'm like, do you know who George is? He's like, yeah, sure, no problem. I'll take you to George's house. So get in the car with him and he turned out to be interning at a company that was called Central Park Media. So um, we started talking, we're going through, I was studying theater at the time, and CPM, okay. and I was studying theater at the time, and he started talking to me and he said, um, listen, they asked me to bring in some, do you know anybody who might wanna, you know, I don't know, do some voices for anime? I was like, how about me? <laughs> so um, we did do that, I did get my car back, we did get a car battery, we did all that, and uh, I went in to audition for a show called Record of Lotus War. And um, yes, and I wound up actually booking the role of Dila. So that was my first audition, my first gig. So yes, my brother stole my car. I don't recommend it for everyone. And most siblings will not approve of that. But like I said, my other brother became a cop and the world got balanced. So, yeah. Did you have any previous acting experience? Oh yeah, I was in school. Yeah, I was a, I was a trained, I'm a trained theater actor. I was in school, I was getting, um, I was getting my BFA. I was doing all that stuff. So I was trained for theater. Uh, I had, I was a singer, I had done a bunch of um, uh, theater in the community and stuff like that, so I was, a, I was an actor already. This was just the first time that I had, that I had, and I didn't, I didn't know that I could, that I didn't know that this could be a job. I had no idea that I would still be doing this all this time later. Um, but yeah, so that was my, that was my first, that was my first step. Uh, Were you nervous at all going in? I was, you know, I didn't know what to expect. I was nervous. It was really weird. I was nervous during my first, uh, my first sessions too. Um, going in, I did. I've told people this before. I had watched anime. I watched cartoons. Is what I grew up watching, and I sort of went in and did my best, like Disney voice. That is my thing because I used to practice that in the car, um, and that's what wound up happening. But during our first sessions, I. Um, I was so nervous, I wouldn't take a lunch break when we had long days. I was afraid to go to the bathroom. I didn't do anything. I was like, I just, I just, I was so excited to just have the job that I, people would say, hey, do you want to take a break? And now I realize that everybody, if they're like, take a break, they want to take a break, they want to have a sandwich. I was like, oh no, that's okay. I can keep working. I can keep going through. It's totally fine. Um, and uh, actually, the um, one of the first directors of it, a man named Mike Walden, um, he's since uh, he's since passed away, but he's on there with him. I still work with um, Joe Georgie over at Headline Sound to work with me as well. Um, he he knew me since because I was I was really young when I started off, and uh, he told me he's like it's so funny seeing you when you started. You were so shy and so like just like nervous and scared, and then like now, you know, the last time I met him, he was like you've you've sort of like blossomed in the whole thing. But yeah. Oh, I was so, I was super nervous. I was, not while I was doing it because I was having too much fun, but like being in the room and having all those people and everything, I was, it was, it was my first, that was my first paid job. My first paid job as an actor was saying, and my first words that I ever say was, ew, it's moldy in here. <laughs> and thus launched my career. <laughs> Do you have any rituals to, you know, kind of reach an equilibrium before you go into a studio session and that you do every day or you can go um, on? It depends. I, I do also because I, I, I now I'm at the point I teach voiceover and I do stuff like that as well, but um, it depends on the voice. Normally I'll do vocal warm-ups. Um, I do stretch out my body and do that. 
um, sometimes you'll just go in and you're sort of ready, but I'm a singer also, so I'll sing, I'll do, I'll do sort of like my kind of things, I'm not going to do them now, because go home and sing, but yeah, I do, I sing, I sing a lot, I'll sing a lot beforehand before I go in, and, um, and I'll warm up my voice, but that's, but that's most of the things, and I also, some people bring in, if you have like, Siki, bring in apples, apple cider vinegar, I have slippery elm tea, like there's a whole litany of things that I'll do, and I try to get as much sleep as I possibly can, because that's the only thing that I can do. Also, I just like sleeping, it's fun. What is your favorite thing to sing? Uh, I sing jazz, as a matter of fact. Yes, I did. I do a show, actually, I did it's Friday night that I call the Anime Cabaret Improv Jam. Um, we, uh, I, sing, I sing jazz normally, and I've done cabarets and stuff like that out by me. I sing show tunes and things like that, but that's sort of my, like, an Ella Fitzgerald, like, Nina Simone kind of love, like, and old school kind of, like, 20s, 30s sort of stuff. So, but I do the jam, and um, I tell stories about how I started and, and my experiences in anime, seeing some jazz, some blues, and some anime songs, and at the end I improv a whole bunch of sets. I'm, I'm sort of like, yeah, that's that's my fun. And that's sort of, in the beginning, I didn't, I sort of kept everything like very anime here, but now I bring in, I'm like, these are the two things I love. I love cartoons, I love singing, eh, you get them both together, there you go. Uh, that's my when it comes to voicing Amy, yes. how different is it, you know, to record for the video game, like the video game lineup as opposed to the cartoon? Um, when we had done that, the animation at the time, you just had the director and maybe the engineer in your room, and when we had recorded the video games for that, uh, there were oftentimes a lot of producers in the room. There was, uh, at one point, they had, I think, the most amount of people we had, and there was about six six or seven, I think, of people, so they would bring them in. So that's a little bit different. Um, also, the stuff that we had done for the show was all ADR, and much of the video game stuff, it's different. Sometimes you're doing a prelay, so it's not, you know, you're not seeing the picture. Sometimes you have some animation, but they don't necessarily have the mouths done yet. So that was the kind of stuff. But the main thing was that there were other people in the room, and you're, you're doing the lines as opposed to doing them visually to the whole story, you're usually doing sometimes the banks for games. It's like any other game, you'll do the bank for the games, and you'll do, you'll do that, and, and some scene work. So that was the difference, though, is that there was a lot of, a lot more people in the room. I'm curious about the ADR process, because mm -hmm. starting with the 19th season of Pokemon, you took over as the ADR director of the show. Yes. But I'm wondering, what is the day you want as the ADR director of Pokemon? What are some of your duties, and what does that entail? Um, <laughs> The day in my life is madness, in a good way. Um, yeah, I did, I actually was, I was a second director with uh, Tom Nolan for a while, starting with Black and White as well. And I had been ADR and directing from there. So yeah, I took over for fully for the show, so I'm the lead director and for, and I'm usually the only one who does that. Um, I start, it's usually a long week, we bring everybody in, uh, I'll watch the show, prep everything, cast it out, figure out all those things that'll happen, and then I get, um, I get about seven hours a day of Pokemon all the time. Creatures, doing all the stuff, working with everybody. Um, and uh, I, I happen to run board as well for this. So I develop the system, so I'll run the board as I direct. I'll talk to people, people will come in. Um, everybody who's, we're, we're in the middle of still recording now. But um, uh, I get to, they, they had asked me to come back to do, to at the end for XY when I took over and I love that and so I've been doing it since then. Um, I don't know, what do you want to know? It's great fun. I sing a lot in the booth too. They know it's a good day when I start singing to them. I have songs for Gladion, I have songs for pretty much everybody. Carter who is, uh, uh, or some of you know Miss James, he's James and Meow. He and I will sing. He actually wrote a song with me. We wrote a song for my cabaret that I had that I uh, did over at Hotel Mamas, and um, yeah. But uh, mostly run board. So a lot of it's trying to keep your flap, uh, the lip flap, the mouths moving um, accurate in there. I want to make sure that everybody has the right energy, that they're pulling stuff in there, that everybody's performances match, and um, we have a lot of fun. I do. Yeah, it's a good time. Just speaking more about your uh, involvement in Pokemon, like you've been with the show for. Pretty much since the beginning, like you, oh, counting both human and Pokemon characters, I think you've had over a hundred different roles in the show for the past 20 years. 
I feel like even in the earlier seasons, you, we could hear you as a new character in almost every episode. Yeah, when we first started out, there was. I, I Because I have so many, you'll see that it's you'll, less and less like I don't do as many like human and main characters and things like that now. Um, but I do audition like everybody else and I'll do and I've gotten some starters and creatures and stuff that I still do uh, But I'm I love it and I love that I can sort of bridge that is I worked with the original cast There's a bunch of us who worked up over there. I've worked with the cast as it came out over here and um, I was really happy when we did I choose you and when we did you know power of us and stuff I was able to bring that sort of like there's a couple of us who've been there since the beginning sort of marry my my goal has always been to sort of marry those two worlds together um, and uh, yeah, I dig it. I did not know that I was going to have so much knowledge of Pokemon. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, I still have to go to the Pokedex and figure everything out. But um, but yeah, it's it's kind of crazy. Had no idea that this would this would be such a big part of life. And it's something I do like I I take it very seriously in in a very fun way. Um, I have a good friend who my, actually my friend who got me into anime we will say the one who came and brought me to find my car my friend Rob he tells me a story about his daughter who he came home and he just hears his daughter sobbing uncontrollably in the next room and he freaks out because he's a dad so he's like oh my god what am I gonna do um he runs into the room he's like okay are you okay are you okay are you okay she's like yeah she's like I'm okay it's just Ash lost and he tried so hard <laughs> But it's okay. It's okay because we'll do it next time. <laughs> and um, we laughed, and he thought that was really funny. I did too. And uh, but in a way, I'm like, that's kind of who I'm. You know, I, that's who I'm. That's who I'm making it for. Like that's who all of the actors when they come in. You know, we have it. We grew up on it. You know, we all have our own feelings. And yes, it's for all the fans who've done this. And there's been a lot of stuff that have come back, and I try and bring that back. But at the end of the day, it's like a new generation of. Um, of kids who are getting a chance to kind of, you know, go into it, which is great fun. So yeah, I'm very, I feel very blessed and very fortunate to have been a part of it for so long. Yeah. Uh, let's see, who else would I use? Uh, Charizard, oh, I'm gonna lean on the fire types, aren't I? I've got some good things in there, let's see. Um, uh, where am I? Greninja, Torcat, Charizard. Uh, oh no, I didn't say, I said Torcat. I meant um, Incineroar. I'm gonna go straight to Incineroar. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Gonna have my kind of Thunderbolt hanging out over there. So Incineroar. I go though. I guess Incineroar and Charizard are gonna be over there. Um, I will take Oshawott just because. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, where am I on four? Mm -hmm. I have two more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No legendaries. No legendaries. <sighs> That's too easy. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. I need. Uh, Balance to go yeah, I know, I know. I'm just picking the ones that I like. Ah, oh, Licky Tongue, because I think they're funny. Oh my God. <laughs> That'll be fun. Um, and um, and the Shaman count is a legendary. No, not really, right? You wouldn't count that. Can I take Shaman? It's, I'll allow come it. Come on, it's on the show now, regular. I'll, so. I'll allow it. I'll allow okay, it. Okay, I'll allow it. Okay, yeah. so then there you go. That's how I'm bringing it. Okay. I'm a little healing on there. Speaking of choosing Pokemon, two of those Pokemon you mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, Tora Cat and Oshawa, you played in the show. Yes, I did. Uh, a long time, ton of other Pokemon. Also, mm -hmm. I was wondering, like, what's it like kind of to express emotions through characters that Often can only say their name, or mm -hmm. in the case of Tor Cat, that meow is like kind of a regular cat. Um, I love it. When I first started, I was terrified. I auditioned for both of those. So I auditioned for Lytton and Oshawa, and, and they cast me. So even though like there's a lot of things that I cast, but for all the starters and the main thing, like we'll put them forward and they get cast by by Seattle and by Japan. So they cast me. Um, that was the first one that I had that sort of had personality. I was terrified. I was like, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna make this? Like, all I can do is say my name? What's gonna happen? <laughs> and um, and it sort of had life of its own. It became one of my favorite things to do. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I was talking about this earlier. Um, Oshawa has, all of my characters sort of have inspiration from other things. So Oshawa is a little bit inspired by Jimmy Durante. If you know that, if you know like Vaudeville and other things. Just like my Lena Inverse and Slayers is a little bit inspired by Mae West. So there's a little bit of that, but um, but yeah. Now, when I have, whenever we have large sections where the Pokemon are talking to each other, they're having dialogues. Like they, you still know. Like if I started, if I was like, 
you still kind of have a sense of what I was saying. So you're doing that with, with just the sounds and you get um, you can get a lot out of it. So yeah, but whenever I work with anybody or whenever we do stuff, we do all of them have internal dialogues or, or monologues that they're sort of giving underneath that so they know what they're doing. And I, strangely, sadly, or joyfully, however you want to look at it, I know what all of them are saying at every single time. So yeah. Yes, yeah, a little schizophrenic, but it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Do you hope as the voice of Amy that, you know, eventually she'll convince Sonic to uh, date him again? Listen, well, now that, now that he looks like himself again, yes. <laughs> um, uh, Before we'll he would have been busy. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, I would have been like, you know, all right. But, um, sure, sure, take a look at him now, we'll see. Um, but yeah, that would always be fun. It would be fun, I mean, you know, we had a lot to learn. They had growing pains like every relationship does. <laughs> Just to take you back, um, yes. talk about Slayers uh, playing Lena in verse mm -hmm. um, in this day and age, mm -hmm. a, a strong female character uh, doesn't really need a, a man mm -hmm. per se, oh. uh, has her own job mm -hmm. and is a strong fighter. Mm -hmm. And she's going after what she wants. Yes. She's like, this is my game, it's fine, you want to come with me, Gary? That's fine. Yeah, no, I, I loved her. She was, like I said, she was... Actually, that may be why I went a little May Westy with her because she was sassy. She knew her power. She went in. She didn't need anything else, and um, and she just had this sharp comic whip. And she's got some pretty. Um, I was watching my language. I was going to say badass moves. I don't think I can say badass. I think that's okay. Uh, she's got these really. Uh, she's she was just really powerful. So I I also. While I was doing that, I was also, I'm a huge Buffy the Vampire uh, fan as well, who's also like kick-ass going over there. So um, I was always like, we're both slayers, it's fine. Uh, exactly. But um, but yeah, Lena is a trip. I love her, I will always love her. She's always going after what she wants. And, it's, and I like also is that she's going after her own thing and she has her own intentions on there. Um, but when the right thing to do comes along, she always still like she always like sidetracks a little bit, a little bit, a little bit over in that direction. Um, I had so much fun and it was so cool. Like when I when I auditioned for Lena initially, um, I just it was one of the third things that I ever had auditioned for. I walked in, did my audition, and I was like, I want that so bad. She's so cool. <laughs> And uh, so I was lucky to be able to like walk out with her. But even when we reprised it afterwards, um, yeah, 2000, it was great. It was like walking in and putting on like a comfy pair of pants, you know. Um, and so much fun. Had a great time. The whole cast is fantastic. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yes. Speaking of that, uh, just last month we uh, sat down with Eric Stewart. Ah. Eric, yes. yes. And uh, he, he just cracked up when we brought it up, the eating scene. Oh my, I was about to mention them too, yeah. Um, what did he say? Because he said he was one of the best times on the show. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was. That was one of my most fun two things because I was like, <laughs> like was just like this whole big thing and you never gained a pound. It was lovely. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, we had we had a lot of fun doing that. I remember there was a couple of like we we had even with him. I think he had come in before, and there was like one we had like a whole table, and then we had like like a bunch of plates sliding. This makes it sound like we did that in the booth, but I felt like I had it was sort of you know it's good around the holidays. Uh, yeah, the eating scenes were always fun. Uh, uh, all the scenes with Gary were fun. He's and his comic comedy was so great. Uh, yeah, it's really wonderful. I remember meeting him in the elevator for the first time. Uh, I will tell this story, Eric will, will sometimes say or not, but he's he's also a musician, yes. he's great, and he's an amazing musician, absolutely wonderful. And I remember coming in, because we record separately, so we don't always see each other. So, I come into the elevator, and he was dressed all in black. He had this album, Blue Dressed in Black, and he had his little pork pie hat on that's leather. And um, I walk into the elevator, and there's this guy just standing there, like looking super cool, and he's like, Hey, what's up? And I'm like, ah, hey, uh, I think you're Cowrie. I am in a show with you. <laughs> he was super cool, but um, he's awesome, talented, and really wonderful. And he's a lot of fun to work with, so yes. And we did have fun with the eating scenes. Yeah. They're all, it was always great. I love that, I love, I love that cast, and I love the show. And I have a Lena and Doll on my dresser 
and a couple of cups. And um, you know, I'm still trying, I was trying to find one of the pots that people have, but they, they were all sold out. So yeah, it's all right, it's all right, don't worry. It'll happen, it'll happen, I feel it. But yeah, she has a very, very special place in my heart. I love her. You mentioned you teach voice acting now. Yes, I do. Is that surreal uh, for you? Um, well, not anymore, because since I've been directing so long and doing this, I was stepping into it. Uh, if I look back and think about it, like the me who was over there looking back would probably have been like, that's insane, it's trippy. Um, but I started teaching a couple of years ago. I actually also teach a master class. I do, I'm a guest artist at NYU, so I teach there as well. I teach dubbing. Um, Fish? Um, yeah, in Stone Street actually. Awesome. So, um, and I do a workshop with a fellow voice actor and voice coach, Erica Schroeder who uh, has played a whole bunch of things. She was the Luffy to my um, to my chopper. And she's also, and she was Blaze and a bunch of other things. So she and I teach with another woman named Jen Sukup, who is the casting director who cast out the most recent Transformers out in New York. So we workshop on that. We teach character creation, doing your voices. Uh, and, then I and then I do a dubbing segment at the end. I also taught in um, Korea. Uh, I do I also do a class that is about a vocal preservation and making your making voices and your sound for also people because there's a lot of screaming that we do. So it's about finding finding the places in your palate and things that make sound that you don't realize and also how to support and use your voice in a way that you're not going to damage it. Because I do and I, I use that in the booth a lot because we'll have you know some knocking bit like we'll have matches like for we just got we're doing the league you know we've been doing the league the league the alola league just started airing um the weekend before last they did 151 and this week they had their first rounds um people screaming in there for hours like i do not go easy on these people i will tell you like they'll do something i'm like yeah no 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 no, no. i'm like you're way more excited than that i'm like you're i'm like you're about to win this game go for this you know so i so they so they give it all out but people are screaming, so we make sure that we can support, you can, that's part of the craft. You're doing the thing, you're doing your performance, but you wanna make sure that you can support the voice, you can do it, and that I work with a lot of people who are on Broadway, who are who have done stuff before. Um, Gladion, who plays, uh, Eddie Lee, who plays Gladion, he um, just went on as Hamilton recently. Um, one of our other guys, um, the Professor Kakui is in Beetlejuice, like these guys are performing all the time. So they have hours and hours and hours of stuff in the booth and then outside of the booth so they get vocal fatigue. So that's one of the things that's important. So that's, I teach people not just the character creation on that, but also how to support their instrument and do that so that they're able to perform there, do it well, and then also still do all the other work that we have to do as actors. I went to NYU. What? I you, went to NYU. You went to NYU? Awesome. Cheers, cheers. Did you, which, which, uh, which part? Uh, CAS and Tish. Okay, okay. very cool. I was at Stella Adler. Okay, yes, I know Spell Out of Studio. Yeah, we have a couple of NYU people. We got, we got, some, we got a lot of people in our cast in NYU too. So, uh, yeah, very cool. Uh, thank you guys. I think we're going to, you know, hey, how's it going? I'm going to interrupt. Um, time for like a couple more questions. How do you protect your voice generally? You mentioned the screams before mm -hmm. with your students. Uh, I make sure I warm up beforehand when I do that. I still work with a voice coach myself. I have my mentor is a woman named Diane Towser who um, she works with me. She had worked with Pavarotti and other stuff, but I still practice. I still do that. I still work out my body. Um, I drink a lot of water. I always sleep with a humidifier, especially in New York. We get a lot of dry. Get, you guys know is dry. Yeah, it's real dry, especially with the steam heat. Um, but um, I'll try to get rest whenever I do things. I do um, in the booth, like I said, throat coat, um, lemon and honey tea. Uh, try not to, don't have any aspirin when you're just having the thing that's there. You have apples, you just try and take as, as good care of your voice as you can. But um, if I have rougher days, I definitely make sure that I warm up and do the do the throat coat and like warm up the body as well. Yeah, so. Just, just speak to um, how four kids and Fox Box mm -hmm. um, really brought in uh, U.S. Too, yeah. yeah, and this is a this is a thing. I will say this is the only comment that I'll make on that. Sometimes people have a little questionable rap on things because they know they changed stuff and did things. Um, they they were at the forefront of bringing this kind of anime that was mainstream, and it's because of those shows getting out there that a lot of people then started to look at all this other stuff, and then this big wave of popularity came on. I am. 
I grew up, like I said, watching um, Robotech, like all these other things, Battle of Planets, G-Force, Voltron. Okay, yeah, you, know, you, you think I didn't watch every single episode of Voltron afterwards. I also watched every episode of She-Ra, but we'll talk about that too, on both sides. Um, but um, it introduced this whole group of people who didn't know what it was, and it also, and it, it changed the demographic of how the conventions have been from like a smaller, a smaller group of people who just kind of knew to now you get a lot of people who are who are just you can find it on anywhere. You have all this stuff that's coming from Funimation, that's coming from Crunchyroll. If it hadn't have started on the Fox Box with those kind of things, I don't know that they would have had the huge interest in the, the game because like. I'm happy to say I was part of many gateway anime. Whether you consider Pokemon one or not, it's up to you. There was Yu-Gi-Oh, of course. Um, you know, we had we had One Piece when we brought it up on there. We, yeah, we had that also. Uh, Shaman King, which was on there, which yes, exactly, which was good. And um, and of course Slayers. Slayers is Slayers is the non-super broadcast gateway that comes over. People go. I've had people show me, tell me they're like, yeah, I just showed it to my kids, and then I was like, I look. Great, <laughs> but um, but yeah, I'm really happy to have had that because it brings this community is special. It brings a lot of people together. You have a lot of really cool stuff. People are super into it, but it also brings a lot of people together that found a home with each other that wouldn't have had it. And um, I love that. So here's to Gateway Anime. <laughs> a toast to four kids and all of us over there.